There are recommended daily intakes of essential nutrients, like vitamins, to prevent deficiencies. But recently, the first dietary recommendation for a bioactive food compound was published. Bioactives are food compounds that are not necessary for basic human needs, but may have health benefits. For example, plant metabolites called flavonoids. Flavonoids are a type of polyphenol, of which the most commonly consumed are flavin-3-alls, also known as just flavanols. A review of the literature suggested that the intake of 400 to 600 mg a day of flavanols would be beneficial for cardiometabolic protection, potentially helping to improve blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood sugars. Note it specified that these are food guidelines, not supplement guidelines, though really they're more like beverage guidelines, as tea, green or black, would be by far the easiest way to reach those levels, though there are also certainly some in a variety of berries and cocoa. However, there is an enzyme called polyphenol oxidase that can break down polyphenols like flavanols. That's what causes certain fruits and vegetables to brown when you cut into them, like bananas and potatoes. Why would a plant do that to itself? Apparently as a defense mechanism, part of the plant's own immune system, when exposed to oxygen, polyphenol oxidase can oxidize polyphenols into breakdown products with antimicrobial activity. So when a banana gets bruised, or you cut open an avocado, the polyphenol oxidase can start oxidizing polyphenols into defensive compounds that can glom together and form a brown compound called melanin, the same class of compounds that darkens the skin of a banana darkens our skin too. OK, no problem, we can just not eat brown bananas, as that's visual evidence that many of the polyphenols have been lost. But what if you mixed that banana, which you know is filled with a polyphenol oxidase enzyme, into a smoothie with polyphenol-rich foods like berries or cocoa? Might you end up with less nutrition? Big chocolate-funded researchers sought to find out. They put about a half a cup of cocoa's worth of cocoa flavanols into a smoothie containing banana, compared to the same amount in a berry smoothie with no bananas. Here's a measure of how many of the chocolate flavanols made it into the bloodstream within hours of drinking the chocolatey berry smoothie, compared to the same amount of cocoa blended into a banana smoothie. It's almost as if you hardly put any cocoa in there at all, presumably because the banana enzymes chopped up all the chocolate goodies. Let's not presume, though. They blended up the chocolatey banana smoothie again, banana, almond milk, and cocoa flavanols, and then just measured the amount of flavanols as the smoothie sat for an hour. Check it out. The cocoa flavanols plummeted, more than a 90% drop, a half-life of like 10 minutes, so every 10 minutes or so the levels drop in half. How do they know for sure it was the polyphenol oxidase enzyme? Because when they added specific enzyme blockers, they blocked the effect. OK, no problem. If you're adding bananas to your smoothies, can't you just chug it quickly before the enzyme does its job? And presumably the enzyme would be deactivated when it hit the acid bath of the stomach, but let's not presume. You don't know until you put it to the test. I love that the researchers did all these extra steps. This time they made study participants alternate sips between a straight banana almond milk smoothie and like chocolate milk, cocoa flavanols plus almond milk. So there was no pre-mixing in the blender between the banana enzyme and the flavanols, just mixing in the stomach. Here's how many cocoa flavanols make it into your bloodstream when sipping the chocolate milk alone. Mixed in the stomach with banana, and you get this, 37% less in your bloodstream, which shows that the banana enzyme can still do some polyphenol damage in the stomach. And yes, in simulated stomach acid conditions, the polyphenol oxidase enzyme is indeed down, but not out. So yeah, if you drink a smoothie with banana in it, it's better to not let it sit around, but even if you drink it immediately, you may still get less polyphenols in your system than if you would have skipped the banana. But banana makes smoothies so rich and creamy. Anything we can add to the smoothie to counter the banana enzyme's effects? That's exactly what I'll cover next.